Hey friend, this is the Traveling Wellnesspreneur podcast and I'm your host, Ali Temple. I travel full-time running my dream wellness biz from the tropics and I want to share with you how you can create a lifestyle of freedom and purpose too. Stay tuned for inspiring and fun conversations that will empower you to take action towards your dream lifestyle of travel and freedom. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Traveling Wellnesspreneur podcast. If you are new to me, I'm your host, Ali Temple. I mentor yoga teachers and healers around growing their dream biz without the overwhelm so they can create a lifestyle of freedom and purpose. And today I'm chatting with a very inspiring guest named Elena Souk, and she has a great story to share with us around how she chose to leave her comfortable nine to five behind and grow a thriving wellness biz on her own terms. And Alina also shares with us some unexpected shifts that she's made along the way. Plus, she'll talk a little bit about how she splits her time living between Turkey and Miami. So before we get into Alina's interview, I want to remind you that my new self-paced course, Expand Your Brand, is on promo right now only in August. So that's about one more week from now. And you can grab it for only 27 bucks before the price goes up to 197 So check out the links in the show notes to learn more about that course it's going to teach you how to grow a global community a global audience and get started with passive income now let's jump into alina's bio alina is a multi-hyphenate entrepreneur coach and dj blending creativity and purpose she empowers creatives and entrepreneurs through her online eft tapping community the conscious life design studio With a successful launch of her first e-commerce product this year, the Romanticize Your Life Journal, she's laying the groundwork for a transformative wellness platform set to launch this fall. She balances her digital empire with a global DJ career, bringing uplifting house music to dance floors in the US and Turkey. So you can check out the show notes to find links to connect with Alina, and here is my conversation with her. Welcome, Alina. It's so nice to have you here. Why don't we start off by you letting us know where you're joining us from and how long have you been there for? I am currently on the Aegean coast of Turkey in Izmir. Uh, I currently split my time between Turkey and the U.S. and currently I've been here since May. Awesome. Awesome. So many questions about that. So are you from the U.S. originally? So originally I was born in Belarus and I came to the States to Brooklyn when I was four years old. It was actually my fourth birthday. I grew up in New York and New Jersey. And then in my twenties, I moved to Miami and that's where I met my significant other who is originally from Turkey. And uh, very shortly into our relationship, he asked if I would want to spend a summer in Turkey. I said yes, and then I fell in love with it here. So now we're pretty much like 50-50. Nice. That sounds like a good balance. So how long ago was that when you first went to Turkey? It was actually last summer. I went at the end of August into September, which is arguably the most beautiful time here. This year, I'm here from May until like October or November. Awesome. So about a year ago then. Were you doing much traveling before that? You were based in Miami, but did you travel much before Turkey? I've had like spurts of travel. When Mm -hmm. I was in college, I studied abroad in Paris. So I did a lot of Europe during those few months. And then for a while I had a corporate job. So I would take many getaways like max seven to 10 days to go and explore. Um, During that time, I went to Thailand and the Philippines and it was my first time in Greece. And then I left the corporate world and became an entrepreneur. So I was pretty stationed in Miami during those years because I was doing a lot of building. I was really, really focused. And for about five years, I pretty much was just grounded in Miami. And now I'm here in Turkey and definitely doing some traveling here. Like last month we went to Greece. Um, We definitely want to see Georgia, Portugal. I've got a couple of places on my list now. 
Cool. So you started the entrepreneurship, you said about five years ago, right? It was in December of 2019. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I'd love to hear a little bit about that and how you shifted from what you were doing before. Firstly, what were you doing before you started entrepreneurship? So I graduated from college when I was 20. Right away, I got a job with Progressive Insurance. It's one of the biggest insurance companies in the US. At that time, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted uh, actually exactly what I was looking for was like a positive work environment and opportunities to grow within a company. So that's exactly what I did for like seven and a half years. And then it got to a point when I was starting to wonder like, okay, what's next for me? Because all the promotions didn't really look appealing anymore. Whereas in the past, like I was like super excited to interview and keep getting promoted. Uh, I lost that sparkle. So I started doing soul searching. That was around 2017. I was very lost. I knew that this was not going to be for me forever, but I had no idea what the alternative was because I knew I wasn't going to leave for another company. Really, everything was nice there. It just was not exciting me anymore. Mm -hmm. So what what did you start to do? Or can you kind of pinpoint what created that shift when you left that company and decided to do something on your own? Was there a process of meditation or energetic practices that you took up that helped you realize what you wanted to do? Yes, in retrospect, it was actually such a beautiful unfolding of the transition. So things got pretty rough for me at at one point. I was just like, I stopped really doing well at the job because I wasn't engaged with it anymore. And I was always a top performer, so that was hard for me. I was also getting my master's at the same time and I failed my dissertation proposal because it was just like really uninspired like I was at the time. All of that brought me to a point where I was like, okay, like what am I even doing? Actually, the first thing that I did was I had a moment with myself where I asked if today was my last day, what would be my biggest regret? And the first thing that came to my mind was never having my own dog. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I thought like, I always wanted a dog. My parents never let me have one. So I went and I got my dog and it's actually a pretty symbolic decision in my life because 99% of people said, don't do it. It's a huge responsibility. Do it when you're in a relationship. So you have a partner to take care of it with you. And I said, you know what? No, like against all odds, like I just wanted to have my own pet and he's taught me so much that was like the first thing that i did that was like interrupted the patterns right because i was kind of in this like cycle of just like going to work hanging out not really doing anything i'm passionate about so that definitely created a shift and because of him i switched gyms so i used to go to a gym close to my office but because now i had a puppy i chose a gym that was closer to my apartment and the gym was like a 1980s super rough around the edges boxing gym but they had a yoga class that was included in the membership and i started going to that yoga class and it wasn't my first time doing yoga but in the past i always associated yoga with a gym class so it was always for fitness purposes because that's in the west like how It's perceived a lot of times, right? This particular instructor took a spiritual approach and I started understanding that yoga is not just for fitness, it's to prepare yourself for meditation. I was always pretty spiritual. Like I discovered the secret in 2008 when I think everybody kind of started learning about it and I hopped right on board. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so I had that element of spirituality, but it was always more so like positive thoughts become positive things. So I wasn't really looking at any of my shadows. And when I started getting into that yoga practice in that season of my life, I started getting very honest with myself. And so that definitely created a big shift for me in my trajectory. That's when I started, I actually got myself a coach and started talking about what do I really want? What are my fears around changing my path and starting to make actual small changes. And interestingly enough, what ended up happening was 
I brought my meditation practice into my office as a wellness offering. And I ended up writing my master's dis dissertation on meditation in the workplace. So the dissertation I originally failed, I ended up writing on something that passed with flying colors because it was very original in what they were <laughs> normally receiving, uh, the degrees in organizational psychology. So not too many people were bringing in mindfulness at that time. That's where I realized, okay, there's something here. I really love sharing my mindfulness practice. People were responding really positively. Not at first. At first, people were really resistant to it because it wasn't normal at the time to have meditation practice in the workplace. And even people would tell me, oh, I'm not religious. I, I, I'm not going. I'm not religious. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely uh, there were times where I didn't have anyone in the class. I, I hosted uh, meditation once a week. It was a little rough at the start, but when it was my last day at the office, the room was so full that people were in the hallway, like they weren't even all fitting there. So that was oh. a really cool transition into then becoming an entrepreneur in that space of mindfulness and helping people with their stress and anxiety and life design in general. Yeah, that's a really beautiful story. And it's great to hear that you followed your heart. And even though you were in a comfortable place, and you had a good job, and for a lot of people that might be enough, but I definitely can relate to just wanting more and uh, looking for something else. And Taking the action, really, I think that a lot of the people in my community and a lot of the listeners to this podcast are yearning for something more and they want to build their own business. They want to have the freedom to live in different places and to travel around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe they're just getting stuck on the, the piece where they actually take action. There's fear mm -hmm. there. It's interesting that you bring in meditation into how this helped you get to where you want to be, but you also created a business kind of around these types of principles. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and what you've created over the last uh, five or so years? I would love to, but first I want to mention one very memorable part of my path transition, I guess you can say, is that everyone in my environment in that time thought I was crazy. And I even was dating a guy at the time who literally said to me, and this is so memorable, he said, what? more do you want like you have a good job that pays you well you have a nice apartment like i don't really understand like what you're trying to do here so i always like to remind people that your environment is a reflection of your past thoughts and habits and decisions so a big part of me breaking out of that was actually when i moved from New Jersey, which is where i grew up for most of my life from nine years old to 25 to miami where I ended up in a community of people who are embodied in living their passion, doing whatever it takes, connecting, helping each other out, and really living that life of more than just settling, right? So that said, uh, I moved to Miami actually through my corporate job. I found a way to kind of, again, this is all action, right? So I was like, okay, I don't know what I want next, but I'm, I see this opportunity to at least change my environment. So I moved with my corporate job. I stayed another year and then I left. And my original plan was to bring this mindfulness practice into other companies outside of my own. And I left in December of 2019, which was, as we all know, right before the pandemic. Also, I had zero entrepreneurial experience, zero sales and marketing experience. Up until that point, I was just kind of using my Instagram as a blog to share my spiritual journey, but everything I was doing was intuitive. And when I left, I had a very steep learning curve and rude awakening about what it actually takes to run a business. And <laughs> whatever I, yeah, haven't we all? And that's really just like part of it. Like you can never be perfectly prepared because you don't know what you don't know. And I didn't have a lot of entrepreneurial friends at that time where I could see what they were going through. So I was really going in blind. I truly took a leap. 
there were things I did as precautions. Like I did have savings from my corporate job, but I was committed to not touching them and to really just, I cut out all my expenses. There were definitely sacrifices. I was already living on my own in Miami. So I had bills to pay, nobody to support me at that time. So originally I was going to bring mindfulness to other corporate spaces, but that wasn't really flowing. And by that time I had already finished my master's degree in psychology. I had finished the coaching certification. So I was like, all right, this is the time to lean into coaching, which is something I had been wanting to do. And it's really interesting how that whole industry ended up blowing up during that time as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I guess I was part of that. And I just put out a call to action on my Instagram where I had already been sharing my journey. So I had a community there where I had established some trust and I put out a call to action and I got a few clients and I started working with them and started building my approach and my framework through real life experience with them, seeing what works, what they, what's really resonating with them. During that time, I met a girl who was living in my building who was transitioning from being a full-time DJ to teaching others how to DJ. And I had this thought based on my own values of, okay, I'm in this completely new territory now. And I think learning a new skill would be really great for my neuroplasticity, just to start thinking about everything differently. Because once you start going into a new skill, it makes you look at everything else differently as well. Typically, you know, your brain just starts firing new pathways. And also I did it for my inner child because so many times as kids we take lessons and go to activities and then as adults we just stop doing that and so for those two reasons i justified myself to go and take a dj lesson and i ended up falling in love with it to the point that against all logic i dipped into my savings to buy my own equipment i just started djing on instagram live because at that point everything had already shut down mm. And so I was building my coaching business and then just playing for fun on Instagram. And then when Miami started to open up, I started getting inquiries to get booked for professional DJ gigs. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So because for my time that I had been in Miami, I was really social and I was out and about and I was networking. So there were already people on my Instagram from my New Jersey life and from mm -hmm. being new in Miami. So they started to notice and I started getting booked professionally. So as my coaching business was, as I was learning how to even run a coaching business, I was immediately getting income from being a professional DJ. Not only that, but having so much fun because I right away figured out what my niche was with my sound. So I was getting books with really great aligned gigs and really beautiful places in Miami. Like it was a complete 180 from what I was doing. I was an insurance supervisor, like <laughs> just a second ago. <laughs> and now like I'm a professional DJ uh, playing in beautiful spaces in Miami. It was very surreal. That was my initial introduction into being an entrepreneur. That is so cool. You know, when something is meant to happen, it just flows. And it sounds like you had laid down the foundation, you'd done the groundwork, you had connections and that kind of thing. But you put yourself out there and tried something and it flowed and it just worked for you. I have to say that during that time, I was so also so, so, so spiritually tuned in. And I realized when I fall off my practices, as we all do, and that's another thing is part of my message is to say that like, we all have ebbs and flows with our practice to different varying degrees. And I just when I look back on that time, I was practicing yoga like every day, three times a week at least, meditating, doing all the things that, you know, it didn't make any sense for me to take a DJ lesson or for me to buy equipment that cost like two grand at the time. I'm a Virgo sun and moon. I'm a very logical person. So for me to, you know, dip into my savings and buy that equipment was a complete download. You can only hear these types of messages of direction when you are tapped in, when you're connected. That's definitely been part of my journey. And whenever I feel like there's not a flow, I realize like I haven't been doing that work to stay connected to my intuition. That's such an important point. And I'm glad you brought that up. Over the years, since you have created this, this kind of dream life scenario, it really is about a balance between taking action and actually 
listening and doing the work, the energetic work to Mm. be able to hear what's actually going on inside. So you have a journal called Romanticize Your Life Journal. And I'm curious, can you tell us a little bit about that? When I was in corporate, I would wake up in a very militant fashion. Like I would get up early. I would wake up at 6 a.m. and do everything as fast as possible to get out of the door uh, because I had like a one hour commute. This was also way before remote work was normalized. So it was office life. When I became self-employed, I was feeling weird about my mornings because I felt like, you know, I was so trained to just like get up and, and grind. So I started doing this little series on my social media, which is for me, social media is a way to hold myself accountable as well as connect with others. So I was doing these morning posts where I put romanticize your morning and it would be a way to hold myself accountable to slowing down in the morning. And that's not to say that I created four hour rituals or anything like that, but it was as simple as stopping to look at the window and stopping to smell the coffee. Then I, I just noticed that trend was growing and my current partner came into the picture a couple of years ago. We actually met at a party that I was throwing when I was just learning how to DJ. I was I wanted to practice in front of people. Someone brought him. He is very entrepreneurial and he was thinking of creating a new e-commerce product with a friend of his who has a factory that creates journals. And in that moment, while they were brainstorming, I came in to bring them some tea. I was like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> they're like, oh, well, we're thinking that, you know, we want to create a journal. And immediately I was like, I have an idea. I have a concept. I didn't see anyone using that in journaling yet. So we got to work and we created this journal. And the intention of this journal is really to slow down and to enjoy life right now no matter what your circumstances are and in the morning you're prompted to set an intention to practice gratitude as well as commit to something nice that you're going to do for yourself and for others so acts of kindness because so often like we're just going from one task to the next that our relationships take a hit as well with ourselves and with others and in the evening you're prompted to reflect on your day to plan something nice for the next day it's a guided journal to slowing down and feeling more appreciation so that you can attract more and more in a more powerful, soulful way. I know many of us, many of the listeners are entrepreneurs and in in the wellness space already, but something that uh, I think we all need the reminders to practice what we preach. And I know that my practices have had ebbs and flows and It's nice to have something that just is a gentle reminder that you can fit into your day when you're busy, but it still keeps you present and grounded. That's a really great idea. And it's cool, again, how it kind of just flowed naturally, the timing of that, how it came together too. Yeah. And the fact that I was bringing them tea is also just very on brand for the (laughs) theme because it's about like, how can we make this moment nicer? So we're sitting here, we're brainstorming, let's have some tea. Let's add tea Mm -hmm. to the mix so whenever you're making the present moment more enjoyable you get more flow and you get more outcome for less input totally and i love a good cup of tea it does make everything a little more pleasant it really (laughs) does it really does so alina before i let you go i want uh to ask you about what else you have going on? I know that you have a community where you work with conscious entrepreneurs, conscious life design studio. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes. Yeah, so during my entrepreneurial journey, I got really burnt out and uh, I was doing just too much of everything, as I'm sure many of us can relate to, um, mm-hmm. especially when you're passionate about everything you're doing. Uh, it's easy to get burnt out sometimes. And that prompted me to rediscover EFT tapping, which is something I had always heard about and practiced here and there. But I really needed a practice, something new to breathe life into me in that season. I discovered rediscovered EFT tapping and it made such a profound impact on breathing life back into me that I got certified as a practitioner. Similar to DJing, I never found joy in just doing it myself in my room. Um, right away, I wanted to share it with community, share, create an experience around it. So I started the Conscious Life Design Studio, which Conscious Life Design has been the name of my coaching practice since day one. And so now there's this studio where 
It's geared towards creatives and entrepreneurs to come and do a live tapping session once a week. We also do different workshops and we have different little journaling prompts inside and a, a lot of really nice things to keep you on your path. But the heart of it is our weekly tapping session. It's a way to come and have that accountability, have that community to support you on your journey as you're going towards your purpose and, and creating a life for yourself, which can be really challenging sometimes mm -hmm. and can feel lonely. Um, there's always a seven day free trial as well. Awesome. Yeah, that's very cool. And I definitely feel as an entrepreneur, especially those of us who are living abroad, like you and I, at least part time, you know, to yeah. stay connected to a like minded community is one of the main tips that I tell my clients as well. Mm. So I love learning about other communities out there of other conscious entrepreneurs. Uh, so we'll share the links for both of those things that in the journal in the show notes. So everyone be sure to check those out. The journal is actually part of something much bigger called Botano. And it's a brand new platform that my partner and I are building. And by the time that you're listening to this, it will probably be already available for a beta test. And it's a social marketplace where you get rewarded for doing well-being activities. So you log a meditation and you get points that you can use to buy really cool products in the marketplace. So the journal is one of those products. And now there's going to be a much bigger collection. I'll also mention that. And when you go into the journal website, it's part of the Botano page already, so you can learn more there. Oh, that's very cool. So some exciting stuff coming up in the near yes. future for you. That's Definitely. awesome. Well, Alina, thank you so much for your time. It's been really inspiring to hear your story and thank get to you. connect Thank you for having today. me. That's it for now. Thanks so much for joining me. And until next time, let's stay connected. Follow me on Instagram at Ali Temple Yoga. Join us in the Traveling Wellnesspreneurs Facebook group. And if you enjoyed this episode, please take a minute to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. See you next time.